For the next part of the extended how to play guide, we're going to talk about the d6 dice system, wrath, glory, ruin, shifting, criticals and complications. Before we begin, it's important to remember the golden rule. Have fun! You're all here together to have a good time and enjoy yourselves, so be considerate to others, enable their characters to evolve alongside your goals, and be aware of any things your friends may not be comfortable with. If you're new, ask lots of questions. If you're a veteran, enable new players to ask lots of questions, and be patient and open. If there's a rule that no one can come to an agreement about, the DM's decision is the one you should accept at the table, and it can be discussed after the session. Unlike other traditional tabletop RPG systems, Wrath and Glory requires just one dice type, the D6. The D6 is your standard six-sided die. When you come to the table, make sure you pack a healthy amount to play with. Ten should be more than enough for most games. It's also handy to have a couple that are different colours than the rest of them, to act as your Wrath die. Your dice pool is typically your relevant attribute rating plus your skill rating. However, some skills or abilities tell you to add an ED value. This value is extra dice, and simply means to add that amount of extra dice to your roll. The d6 dice aren't simply valued 1 to 6. In Wrath and Glory, the dice use a value system called an icon system. Simply put, a 1, 2 and 3 counts as no icons, or a value of 0. A 4 and 5 is a single icon, or a value of 1. And a 6 is an extended icon, counting as a value of 2 towards your roll value. When making any tests, bar a few rare exceptions, one of your dice included in the pool of dice you'll roll will be a different colour. This is called the Wrath die. If you are a 6 on this Wrath die, it's a Wrath critical. The value is added to your overall roll and a positive impact happens, plus you gain one glory point. A 1 on the Wrath die is a Wrath complication, and something bad will happen. The Wrath die typically can be a narrative effect that can work in your favour or against you. In combat, it can have an effect based on the complications table, should your DM choose to use this in the games. It's possible to roll enough icons to succeed a task, but still get a complication on the wrath die. Similarly, you can fail a task, but still score a wrath critical. But before that, let's talk about what you'll be making tests against. During gameplay, you'll be asked to make different tests using your d6 dice pool. Your dungeon master will have a difficulty number, or DM, that acts as a number you need to match or beat with icons rolled from your dice. As an example, your character might want to jump over a hole blown into a gangway over a drop into the underhive below. The DM considers the size of the gap, the grip of the gangway, and the amount of premium you'll have to run up and make the jump, and will either announce a difficulty number or simply ask you to roll. Typically, difficulty numbers are not announced when the DM wants to keep the tension build up in the moment. You assemble your dice pool using the associated attribute for the test and roll your dice. There is a handy difficulty chart for some generic actions you can compare from on page 161 of the Core World Book, and it's also seen here. Wrath points are the representation of your inner strength and your will to push through no matter what. They act as a personal currency to change outcomes of tests or have something work in your favour. You always begin a new session with two wrath points, and they don't carry over to the next session. A DM can award wrath points for any reason, including good roleplay or doing something clever or outside of the box. Wrath points can be used for the following. Rerolling a failure. After you've rolled a test, you can spend a wrath point to reroll every 1, 2, and 3. You can only do this once per test, and not to reroll a complication on the wrath die. You can make a narrative declaration. You have the option to add a minor narrative declaration. Note that if it's too disruptive to gameplay, it may be declined by your DM and your wrath point may be refunded. You can restore shock. As an action, you can spend a wrath point to recover shock equal to your rank plus your tier, though only whilst conscious. Glory is a group resource and it can be spent by anyone. You gain glory points by rolling wrath criticals, but only once per test. The maximum a group can have is either six or the number of players plus two whichever works out to be the largest value. You begin play with zero glory, gaining glory as you go with wrath criticals throughout the session. It's usually polite to ask your teammates before you spend a point of glory, as it's for everyone. You can spend glory points to do the following. Increase your dice pool. You can spend a point of glory for each bonus dice you want to add to a roll. It's important to know that you can only do this after the initial roll and after any wrath re-rolls, and can only be used once per test. You can increase damage. Once you've made a successful hit, 
You can spend a glory point to add one to the damage total. You can spend as much as you like to increase the damage. You can increase the severity of a critical hit. So you can spend a glory point to improve the effect of critical hits in combat. You can also spend a glory point to seize the initiative. Let's talk about shifting. At a glance, shifting can seem a little complicated, but in reality, it's quite simple. In a nutshell, when making and succeeding a test, if you have any spare exalted icons that are over the amount needed to pass the test, you can use these to shift. In a non-combat environment, this triggers an additional effect. In a combat environment, this is converted into extra damage in the form of one ED die. Shifting examples can be found on page 166 of the core rulebook, but I would encourage you to also consider some of your own that fit the type of test performed. You can also simply convert your exalted icon to one point of glory, which is limited to one per test. So let's talk about the types of test. There are several tests that you'll be asked to make, and they are as follows. An attribute test. When doing things like pushing a boulder, as an example, you may be asked to roll a strength test. This is an attribute test that simply put uses only your attribute value as the dice pool. It's important to note that a talent or piece of equipment might offer bonuses in some of these roles. A skill test. When doing things like taking a Medicaid test to study a virus, you'll be rolling a skill test. Your character's abilities, relevant skill rating, talent, and other circumstances might mean you get bonus dice for this role. There are combat tests. Combat tests work slightly differently, which I'll cover in more depth in the combat dedicated video. But basically, to perform a ranged attack, it's agility plus ballistic skill. To calculate ranged damage, it's damage value of the weapon plus extra damage dice. To perform a melee attack, it's initiative plus weapon skill. And to calculate melee damage, it's the damage value of the weapon plus extra damage dice plus strength. To inflict wounds, it's the target's resilience minus the AP minus wounds. Influence tests. When you need to call in the aid of an organisation, or ask for a favour, or acquire weapons and equipment, you can make an influence test. To do so, discuss the faction you wish to interact with. Your DM will consider your previous interactions as a team and your character's personal relationships with the faction. Amongst these considerations, you must share a keyword with the faction. If you share additional keywords with the faction, you gain a plus one bonus die for each one. Use the wrath die with this test, and complications can offer a permanent loss of a point of influence at the DM's discretion. You can also spend wealth to add icons to the result in the form of bribery. Psychic tests. When making a psychic test, you declare the power you wish to use and the power level you wish to use it at. This will determine the difficulty number of the test. You then use your total psychic mastery skill. Please note that there are some factors in place that may require you to add extra wrath die. Success is meeting or exceeding the DM, as usual, and any complications on the wrath die means rolling on the perils of the warp table, regardless of failing or succeeding in casting. Exalted icons can be shifted to increase the potency of the spell's power. More of this will be explained in the Psychic Powers video. Corruption tests. Any character that has to face the ruinous powers will come across a corruption test. To resist corruption, a player rolls a dice pool equal to their conviction trait. This is against the opposing DN valued by the source of corruption. Resolve tests. Resolve tests are to resist fear and terror conditions and uses the player's resolve trait to generate the dice pool. Opposed tests. Opposed tests are tests that usually involve two players rolling against each other. The highest value winning the roll. Anything that raises the difficulty for one person is instead added to the bonus to the roll of another. And finally, there are some other roles that you may come across, such as the d6 roll, which is a simple dice roll, a d3 roll, which is a d6 with the result halved rounding up, and a d66 roll, which is 2d6, the first counting as the tens and the second counting as the single digits. As an example, a roll of a 4 and a 5 would be 45. This concludes the overview of the core mechanics of the game. As mentioned previously, there have been a few things that I've skimmed across, like combat tests, but don't worry, these will pop up in detail in their own dedicated videos. See you next time.